Hi, let's talk about balancing nuclear reactions. Of all of the equations that you can balance, nuclear equations are absolutely the easiest. So here is the driving principle on balancing nuclear reactions. It's the total atomic number and mass number. So remember, atomic numbers in the bottom, mass numbers in the top. The total atomic number and mass number for the reactants has to equal the atomic number and mass number for the products. Those two sides have to be equal to each other. Um, now, you're going to see questions written a couple of ways. You're going to be given some nuclear reactions where there's a space and you have to finish balancing it. You'll also be given word equations um, and it will use um, these terms right here and you have to know um, what that means. Where do you put that particular particle? Um, so I have a cheat sheet here for you that you can look up buzzwords to know how to take um, word equations and write them as nuclear equations. So buzzwords that you're looking for, if you see the words bombard or capture, it means that particle goes on the reactant side. For example, um, you could say something like, let me take this one, calcium 41 um, experiences electron capture to produce, and then it would say the other um, particle. So when it says calcium 41 undergoes electron capture or is bombarded by an electron, that's code for, hey, write that electron, that beta particle on the reactant side. Now look for these buzzwords. Um, if you see the words decay, release, emit, produce, that means that part particle goes on the product side. Um, so here would be an example of that um, right here. It would say polonium eight, uh, 218 undergoes alpha decay. So when you see the alpha and decay, you go, oh, that means the alpha particle is on the product side. Um, so I'm going to use this terminology as we're balancing these nuclear equations together. All right, so here is our example. It's already been done for us. I have a polonium 218 yields lead 214 and an alpha particle is that uh, helium. So we want the total number of the mass numbers on the reactant side to equal the product side. And we want the total number of the um, atomic numbers on the reactant side to equal the product side. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'm going to use a different color so you can see it. We are going to have 218. That's my mass number. It's the only number that I have on the reactant side. It has to equal 214 plus 4. So let's check that math. Is it true? 214 plus 4 equals, yep, 218. Now let's look at our atomic numbers. Let me write down again that this is going to be the mass number on the top and the bottom number is the atomic number. Remember, mass number is neutrons and protons and the atomic number is the number of protons. Okay, so we're going to have 84 equals 82 plus 2. 82 plus 2, yep, sure enough, that equals 84. So this is a balanced nuclear equation. Nice, that's all you have to do. So I put, what, six examples up here that I would like to do with you. Uh, let's go ahead and start on this far left-hand side. So I have a nitrogen 13, and it's going to produce a carbon 13 and something else, some other particle, and we need to figure out what that is. So let's do the math. We'll start with the mass number. We're going to have 13, oops, 13, equals 13 plus, what do I have to have right there? Zero. I need to have a zero. So 13 plus zero equals 13. Great. Now, the, math, the atomic number, seven plus, oops, excuse me, equals, has to equal, so the reactants have to equal the products, six plus, what number do I need right here? I need a one. Six plus one equals seven. So then I put down, this, there's my atomic number, here's my mass number, and then I think, okay, what particle has a plus one down in the bottom, the atomic number, and a zero at the top? It's a positron, so that is going to be E. And I might put a plus right there. Just to be clear, I could leave it blank, it'd be understood to be positive, but just to be explicit, that it's not a beta particle, a minus one, it's a positron, it's a plus one, okay? So there we have it. And to finish that balanced nuclear equation, I would just write the positron. All the top numbers have to equal all the bottom numbers from reactants to products. Let's do another one. Oh, so how I would say this, this would be a positron emission. I would say, um, 
let's see that the nitrogen 13 undergoes a positron emission and that would be code for oh i have to write a positron on the product side okay let's look right here so we've got our calcium that's a 41 plus the beta particle is zero has to equal 41 plus zero is 41. I'm going to go ahead and just write that here since we don't have anything else. 41 will save a step. Um, and then 20 minus one. Now be really careful. I know that you can do basic addition and subtraction, but sometimes doing nuclear chemistry, that negative throws students and they go the opposite direction. So 20 minus uh, one gives you 19. Now you're thinking, okay, what is that? Well, you go to the periodic table and we're going to find atomic number 19. That's the number of protons. And so atomic number 19 is right there. It's going to be calcium. Oh, no, 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 so sorry, potassium, potassium. Okay, so the way that I would say this again is that calcium 41 undergoes an electron capture or is bombarded by an electron um, or a beta particle, you can use either word. Um, and then we just discovered that that produces a potassium 41. Okay, let's come over here. I have strontium 90, so we have 90 has to equal 90 plus, so what does this have to be? Zero. 90 plus zero equals 90. Great. Um, I'll put the zero up here. And then we'll, we'll have 38 has to equal 39 plus what? 39 plus what gives me 38? It's a minus one, minus one. Okay, and then I go through my head, what particle has a zero for the mass number and a minus one for the atomic number? It's a beta particle. So I could do the E, or remember, I could do the B. I could do either of those, that works. Okay, nice, because those are the same thing. Okay, let's go ahead. Oh, and so this, how I'd say this, is that strontium-90 undergoes a beta decay, releases a beta particle, produces a beta particle. Um, you'll hear it this way, beta emission, that um, strontium undergoes a beta emission. So I hear any of those words and I go, okay, that means the beta particle must be on the product side. Okay, let's come down here. Oh, this is kind of a fun one. We're going to have, um, this is how we make heavy water, that's actually deuterium. Um, notice the mass number is two. So we have the proton for the hydrogen, plus we have a neutron. This is called tritium. It's when hydrogen has two neutrons with it. So let's go ahead and um, balance this nuclear reaction. We're going to have two plus three equals four plus, okay, so two plus three is five, so four plus one. Four plus one gives me that five. And then uh, down here I have one plus one has to equal two, so that is two, so I must have a zero right there. Okay, you're thinking, what has a zero for the atomic number and a one for the mass number? That is a neutron, it's a neutron. So there we have it. And this, I would say, has a uh, neutron emission, or releases a neutron, um, if I were to use this in words, that the deuterium plus the tritium releases a neutron. Oh, okay, ooh, this is an exciting one. Here is our uranium-235. So this is the atomic bomb. Um, and this is what's going to be our chain reaction, the power of the atomic bomb. Um, if you take just one neutron and bombard it, hit it against a uranium-235, you get that chain reaction. Um, so we're going to have, let's look at our numbers, one plus 235. Okay, so that equals a total of 236. Keep that in your head. And then down here, we have zero plus 92. Okay, so my atomic number has to equal 92. Let's see what we have going up here. We're going to have 141 plus 92. Okay, so 141 plus 92 is going to give us 233. Okay, we've got that. Um, so actually, do you know, let me, let me put this in um, 233 just so that we can keep that in our head for a second. All right, this one plus 235 is 236. These together, the barium and krypton, are 233. So for that to equal 236, um, and that's 233, I have to have a plus three. That's getting strange. Okay, hold on to that for just a minute. Let's look at our mass num or atomic numbers. Zero plus 92 is 92. So we have 56 plus 36, 
is 92. So if those together, I put 92 right there in parentheses so we can remember, 92, that means that this must be a zero. Okay, so now I go through everything I know for particles. I'm like, I don't know anything that has a zero for the atomic number and a three for the mass number. Well, it means you actually have multiple particles. Look at this. It's a neutron, zero and one, but you've got three of them, that coefficient. I really have three, like this, plus neutron, plus neutron. And so there's your one, two, three, plus 233 gives you 236 right there. And then the zeros across the board so that we can get 36 plus 56 is the total of the 92. Um, so be careful, especially when you're doing um, these large decays, uh, chain reactions, you can come up with multiple uh, neutrons in particular. So if you see something like, oh, that, I don't know what that mass number is. Well, you probably have more than one of a particle. I've also seen multiple protons where it looks like this. You end up with a two and a two. You're like, I don't know anything that's a two and a two particle. Well, you actually have two of the protons and that's how you get the two and the two. Okay, so heads up, heads up that sometimes you can have multiple particles and you just use a coefficient to indicate that. Okay, best for last, I knew that you would like this one, just because it's crazy cool. Um, all right, we have got a beta particle plus a positron. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our math. Zero plus zero is going to give me zero, plus one minus one is also zero. So what is that particle? It is going to be gamma radiation. Hence the term right here, antimatter, antimatter. And that's what Einstein had predicted. You're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Those are things, it's stuff, they're matter. How can you bring two pieces of matter together and then have no matter? Well, that's what Einstein helped explain with E equals MC squared, that there's actually a conservation between mass and energy. Uh, but kind of crazy, pretty cool, I know, and it tweaks your brain, but it is, um, it is so neat. Okay, so there is balancing nuclear equations, really straightforward. You just make sure that the total mass number on the reactant side equals the total mass number on the product side, and total atomic number on the reactant side equals total um, atomic number on the product side. The key to this is knowing all the particles. So have your particles memorized cold. Um, and let's see here, know these words up here. And if you're given word equations, you'll know where you have to write particles on the reactant side, on the product side, and then you can easy do the balancing. So good work, have fun with your nuclear equations. Have a nice day, thanks.